nerd dice. Welcome to this Stateless Code video. This is episode number 37 in our series, nerddice.com, where we build a tabletop role-playing management application. And we've taken a couple weeks off of this, uh, going to back to our other series, um, not easily confused, the Nerd Dice Ruby Gem, which is a, um, a plug-in into Ruby where you uh, kind of dice rolling and random number generation and all that stuff. Uh, we had to do some much needed maintenance on that project. And now we're back in the nerddice.com Ruby on Rails project. So we're, this is video number 37 in the series. And to this point, we haven't done anything specific as it relates to the actual uh, application specific content of managing tabletop role playing. So it's time to change that. We do have a couple other kind of maintenance type chore items in our backlog that we'll probably knock out as we're kind of conducting our user experience interviews. But uh, that's kind of the next phase of this is to um, see how people are using their tabletop role-playing tools today, if any, uh, where the gaps are, and uh, to try to figure out, um, kind of populate uh, ideas and features into this backlog, and then try to figure out from a prioritization standpoint, um, which ones are the highest priority, um, and how we can hopefully deliver value to myself and these users as quickly as possible. So I've created an issue here in our GitHub issues, uh, create a user experience research, research questionnaire. Uh, this is something that we'll iterate on, but uh, first I think I'm gonna talk some about why you would wanna do user experience research and um, usability studies and all that stuff. I'll preface this with a, an acknowledgement that I am not a user experience research or um, usability study professional. Uh, and that's not going to um, dissuade me from trying to do this uh, as it shouldn't dissuade you. There are some people in the user experience world who think, oh, this is something that can only be left to the professionals. You must use pure as the driven snow um, user experience uh, research and UXD things and uh, it, it essentially the perfect becomes the enemy of the good. I am a one man shop here and I can't hire a professional user experience researcher to do this stuff um, for my project. So um, it's one of those things, the idea of T-shaped skill. So I'm a good software engineer, but one of these adjacent skills that we have is uh, trying to figure out how we can understand our users and to be uh, develop things that will provide value for them. And um, I'm a, I know a lot about the subject matter and I would recommend if you're starting out coding and doing your own first project that you pick something that you know a lot about so that you can be both the software engineer and the business subject matter expert. Uh, but even though I've got my own set of expertise, I've got my own uh, biases and uh, idiosyncrasies in terms of how I play uh, tabletop role-playing games uh, and in terms of um, what my needs are. So I could, if I wanted to, be my own one user and I will interview myself uh, maybe first uh, to kind of get an idea for how this works. Um, but I want to get some perspectives outside of myself. So I want to see how people, what tools people are using today, how they use them. Uh, sometimes uh, just the screen share and watching somebody try to do something. And uh, if it's not, if, I mean, if it's a great user experience, great. But if it's not, you can like experience the pain with them and figure out kind of how, um, how to make things better. Uh, one of the, a, a great resource, and um, I'll link to it in the show notes, and um, I don't know if he's on 
Twitter or anything like that. I'll try to mention him or whatever. Uh, but this is um, a a book by Steve. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Krug. If it's Krug, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's called Don't Make Me Think. And the subtitle is A Common Sense Approach to Web and Mobile Usability. So the, uh, the premise behind this is that you can do user experience studies on the cheap. Uh, you don't always have to have the perfect model user for every single feature that you're testing. Um, in some cases, um, having somebody who's not a subject matter expert try to use your, your tool can expose usability um, challenges, uh, especially as it relates to, um, we did a video on the Nerd Dice Ruby Gem recently about the idea of cognitive complexity. Uh, so don't make me think. Uh, you want to not make your programmers and other people reading your code think in terms of how you write it, but you also want to have a user experience that doesn't put a lot of cognitive load on your user. Don't make your user need to know everything that you know about the application as a developer in order to be able to use it. And sometimes um, you can kind of fall into the trap of familiarity. Well, yeah, I, I do this, I test it, um, I test it myself. And then you go and see somebody else try to use it and they're just fumbling around not knowing what to do. So um, hopefully we're going to try to uh, gain some users uh, to do these interviews. Uh, we're going to start with, this is more along the lines of research, where we find out what is available today, how are people using tools today, where are the gaps uh, or the pain points and how they use their tools today, and then that can help uh, determine our uh, backlog and uh, priority of the backlog of the things that we might want to do. So if somebody's got a world-class character creation program uh, or app that they use and um, I, and they're perfectly happy with that and don't want to change that, then me trying to reinvent that wheel might not be the highest priority way that I can deliver value. But if there's a, a, a gap in terms of how these uh, digital tools are being used today, maybe it's around world building or character connections and uh or things like that that um maybe that because it's you're not purchasing a rule uh a rule set in that application that is designed to sell you content from sell you official content uh, maybe they don't prioritize some of those things that you still need to do when you're running or playing in a uh, an application in, in a tabletop role playing game, uh, and maybe that could be one of the things we, we prioritize to try to deliver value. Maybe we put some of that other stuff that's uh, more uh, more established lower in the backlog. Maybe we get to it someday, maybe we don't. Uh, but the idea of trying to find where kind of your niches and how you can provide value. That's what we're trying to do here. We've probably got, by the end of this, we'll have uh, a very long wish list when you see um, how I'm using stuff today, how our users, potential users are using stuff today. We'll be able to take that and um, kind of get things into our backlog as wish list items and then uh, figure out what the dependencies are, if any, and then try to figure out how do we um, order our wish list in such a way that our users can gain value from it. Um, so that's kind of the, the overall plan that we've got here. The first step in this that we're going to try to do is to create a user experience research questionnaire. So we've got, um, I've got a couple of users lined up. I might have more by the time uh, we get through this, but the idea is to give them, for one, before they don't develop this before um, we get on a Zoom call together or whatever we wind up choosing as our collaboration tool, uh, so that they kind of have an idea of what questions they're going to be asked, what tools to have ready, 
if uh, if any. Uh, again, if if we've got a straight pen and paper player, uh, I, I would still be interested in that user experience because um, maybe that person's a pen and paper player because they're dissatisfied with uh, what's on the market or you could kind of have a pen and paper plus thing where let's say you're you're looking up spells or something like that and you want to um, have something that searches for them better um, but you own all the paper books and you don't want to do the outlay like you wouldn't get the value from spending a thousand bucks for the all content uh, version of things from the, the major producers or something like that. So we want to try to figure out what what our users are using today uh, and then figure out those pain points and then how we can um, kind of what the highest priority values are for that. So in order to do this, I'm going to go into the wiki portion of our um, nerddice.com project. And you can see, welcome to the nerddice.com wiki. Wikis provide a place in your repository to lay out a roadmap of your project, show the current status, and document software better together. Uh, full disclosure, this is my first time ever using a wiki on GitHub. So if I do it wrong, um, we have a whole video in our Why Stateless Code series where I talk about why I leave the mistakes in our videos. So if I'm fumbling through something as a newbie and I wind up solving it, uh, the, it benefits the person watching the video. Go, oh, well, I might make that same mistake. And now I've uh, gotten wiser by watching uh, Mike screw it up. So we will uh, try to do this. So it looks like this is very similar to let me see if I've got a edit mode markdown. So th this looks fairly similar to what we'd have in terms of um, the, the other stuff that we've done in our related videos, like our contributing guidelines, our README, um, all that other stuff where you can go in, write, preview, etc. cetera. Uh, so what I'll do to start off is I'll create a homepage using the markdown editor, write and preview it, and then we'll at least, um, I don't know how folders and sub things work. We'll figure that out after we save our initial page. The idea being that we'll have say um, sections for all the non-code stuff. So um, user experience interview template, maybe the results of our user experience interviews, uh, any wireframing that we wind up doing that isn't actually in the code base of nerddice.com. Maybe we can save it there uh, allow for people to comment and ask questions and all that other stuff. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll stop the video and write out the, uh, at least the stub version of um, the wiki, and then we'll go from there. All right, I've got the initial homepage of this wiki um, drafted. Let's take a look at now. So the linking to the readme you can do, you can see the hover there, uh, nerddice.com, and then kind of the ID readme, and that will take us to the readme of the main branch in the project. The, let's take a look at the other links that we have. This takes us to YouTube. what we want this takes us to the channel and to the website so all all this was essentially copied and pasted from the uh, the readme section here this is the part where this is not going to work so we'll show this not working um, although that's kind of cool that you can essentially link to something and have it create that exact new page. We don't want to save that there. We want to actually link to the, uh, the version that we want of this. So what we're going to have to do here is see if we can, I don't think I can go directly to like in the readme here, 
I think I might have to use a um, an absolute link like I did to the contribution guidelines here. If you know of a way to um, use a relative link in your wiki, um, I'm open to it. But my, my guess is that when we make links to our repository from our wiki, we're just going to hit the, the main branch on that. So um, I did that when I did the link to the contribution guidelines. I think I have to do the same thing to the, um, the code along section here. So we'll go back into write mode and here instead of Instead of contributing, it's going to be read me. Let's see if that gets us what we want. It does. It takes us right to that section. So that's what we want there. Uh, and then everything else works from a link standpoint. So we're going to save this page. And now you can see our wiki has the home page. And it kind of gives you outlines to that by default. I didn't do anything to create those uh, those outlines. So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, try to similar what I did just uh, a minute ago where it went you click on the link and it starts to um, um, it, it essentially created the the wiki for you by default so we're going to go back into um, edit mode here and user experience research, I'll pause and write the, uh, the blurb I want in the, the main wiki home. And then uh, when it's time to click on the link and, um, and that user experience uh, homepage gets linked to, then we'll um, go from there. All right, so I've got something here. Uh, I started writing more and then realized that the uh, that actual page would be the place to do that. So right now we've got the, the preview of this. I'm going to take this set of content here and control exit uh, to cut it. And now we're going to go into the, uh, we're going to save this. We'll say save this and now when I go and try to open this page it will um, provide that so I can take this now we'll create a And that I'll pause and I'll at least paste this in. Um, so we've got an idea of how this is going to work. I'll pause and write up this page. All right, I'm back and I've got a draft of um, kind of the user experience and market research page ready. Uh, so this kind of goes kind of through the the why of um, our user experience and market research, kind of my philosophy behind it. Uh, I will probably, and I noted here in our uh, links to the why rails in the 2020s and why stateless code playlists, I'll split out a, uh, a why stateless code video uh, specific to why do your own user experience and market research. So uh, look forward to that video. Uh, the other thing noted here, as I noted in the earlier in the video, I want to make a uh, 
link to that Don't Make Me Think book by Steve Krug. Uh, so I added that to the wiki. Uh, also added in the, the show notes for this, uh, this video. Uh, but the next step here, so we're going to say create initial user oriented experience page. Save it uh, so you can see how it's kind of developing out in the uh, in the wiki there. Uh, and now we have uh, this user existing experience questionnaire, which will be the last thing we tackle, at least in this video. Uh, so I'm going to, similar to other stuff, click on that. It doesn't exist, so um, we're going to take out the... underscores here and I will um, populate this and um, if we uh, feel free especially in the the comments of this video uh, like and subscribe but also if you've got a question that you think I'm missing here uh, feel free to add it um, or add your questions that you would want to ask users or want to have asked to you as a user in the comments uh, so that we can help um, kind of populate this uh, this super set of questions. So we're probably not going to ask every single question in every single interview. We, we want to try to be a little bit more um, fluid in terms of following the users where they want to go rather than where I'm uh, directing them necessarily. So sometimes these things can kind of break the ice and we can follow the users where they want to go. Um, we'll learn I think more that way than just kind of um, trying to shoehorn them into my preconceived uh, notions here. So this is kind of a um, conversation starter for these questions, not the uh, the final product. And we will adapt as we go through uh, kind of a, a retrospective uh, iteration after we conduct each of these videos. Uh, in interviews and see kind of how things are going. What do we need to add? What do we need to stop doing? Kind of try to make, uh, for one, learn as much primarily about the users as we can, and then also make for um, interesting and educational uh, content here in the videos. So I will um, pause and draft this set of questions. And we'll kind of look at it some, and then um, I think that'll be enough to satisfy kind of the definition I've done for this issue. All right, so I've got drafted a list of questions here. I'll kick it into preview mode. Uh, so this is really about the uh, how you're using, how you're doing role-playing games today. So uh, we first start with kind of expectations of uh, kind of what to expect when you're being interviewed. Uh, make sure that those people who agree to do the interviews have an opportunity to uh, promote any content or projects that uh, they want to see promoted. Uh, and I provide information about estimated time, uh, considerations, things like if you're, you're planning on sharing your screen, don't have sensitive material or passwords or anything like that showing. Uh, if you're a, a, a game master, don't have like spoilers for upcoming stuff for your players showing that sort of thing. Uh, and then uh, kind of the, the principle of demo whenever applicable. So uh, these videos will hopefully have some screen sharing involved and kind of show how the player interacts or game master or both in, in that case, kind of how they, how they interact with their, their tools today. Uh, and again, some of these answers might be, I use pen and pa pencil and paper, uh, and that's good. Like you wanna know that information. And if somebody kind of does hybrid sort of thing where I'm using graph paper for maps, but I use um, this site for um, character creation and another site for my story and game master notes or whatever, 
uh, you want to have that uh, kind of find find out what your your users do, um, and and kind of have them tell their story. Um, kind of sections about how you play, whether it's in person, uh, online, a combination. Some games you do ta around a table. Other per other ones you um, you do online. If you play online, what uh, how do you um, collaborate and do your audio visual sort of stuff um, kind of just general non-specific role habits and then kind of player habits game master habits um, I'll put the link to the wiki in the, the show notes page I'm not going to read through every single one of these questions um, we'll be hitting on them in uh, later interviews as we interview our users in future videos uh, what an important part here gaps and wish lists so in addition to how you use your stuff today what what's that kind of i if only i had x available like if you had um the ability to snap your fingers and have a feature uh exist that helps you with your tabletop role playing what kind of is missing from your digital toolkit today and um kind of how, how would that provide value to you uh and then kind of have some uh, potentially non-interview, non-recorded post-interview questions. So if like you can, the user is able to provide referrals and make an introduction to somebody who they think would make for a great user interview, uh, or kind of asking somebody uh, if they'd be interested in uh, follow-ups and future interviews, you don't want to put them on the spot on camera for those sorts of things. So that, that would be kind of after ending the recording questions like that. Uh, and then uh, since this is a, um, a wiki, um, other questions, suggestions, things that I'm missing. Uh, if you think that you've, that, that there's a, a really valuable question that, um, uh, a digital, uh, tabletop role-playing game application should be asking, uh, users and is not asking, uh, feel free to, to chime in in the, the comments or open an issue on, uh, nerddice.com. Uh, itself, uh, you may even, since this is a wiki, you may even be able to propose edits to this page directly. Uh, I, I don't know what this looks like for people who are not me, uh, but that's the idea. Um, we will call this in Theft of User Questionnaire save the page I think this this gives us enough to go on uh, I'll go and um, have a uh, so separately I'll, I'll just add it to the backlog here even though it's not well I'll do that why do user experience stuff uh, I'll, I'll figure out how I uh, track the way I'm gonna do that video but uh, it will be coming at some point in the not too distant future, I expect, um, in our backlog of things that we're doing. And then um, go back to our issue and go back to our home of our wiki and in, in particular we'll link to this page for the Um, closure of the issue. Let's see. See the and we'll link to the wiki.
close with comment. So this is a non-code version of a, an issue. Uh, go back to our, and our issue has been moved to done. So we'll see you in uh, the next video as we start um, scheduling and performing these uh, user experience interviews. And um, once we have enough of those done, we'll start populating on our, our backlog with features and we will uh, work on prioritizing those and figuring out what we're gonna do first. Um, so thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and um, we'll see you in the next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code, and taxation is theft.